Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You got that end of Memorial Day tan, though. I do. Look at that. <laughs> as just far just as my forehead, my, my five head. Really? This cat's gangster. This cat, she doesn't care, okay? She just goes, she just swats, whatever. She doesn't care about anything. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Back to the grind. Post Memorial Day. Post mortem. If we tried to do a video yesterday and it, it didn't fare well. We did it from the balcony and it was uh, very loud. There was a cherry picker going on in the background. It was the internet connection was low. So every couple of seconds Sucked. it would say recording, low connection. And uh, it was just, it was bad. <laughs> and I'm like a control freak. So if I can't have it the way <laughs> that I need it, I start to get like. It's like I'm taking my ball and going Yeah, home. I get a little annoyed, you know, when there's like things I can't control around. Which brings me to uh, the topic of today, which is why was vacation so awesome? What Did you have an awesome time? Welcome back. To the, to the real world, right? Today, we're going back. Whatever the holiday world. it was for you. Of course, this was our Memorial Day. And thank you to all of our yes. enrolled up leaders and courageous warriors for serving and allowing us to have this incredible freedom. So yes. thank you. Thank so, you so much. Yes. Thank you for that. So what was it about the, why can't we have this feeling of holiday weekend all the time in our lives and is that like a total crock of crap to think oh we can create this this vacation vibes vacation vibes hashtag in our own life every day is that unrealistic and how do we do that well so i wanted to figure that out and i was like well what what did i love about my weekend right we went to disney you guys know doug my husband is a walt disney fanatic not a really fanatic but a lover of walt disney because of, of walt and of what walt. he created I, I i didn't grow up with the characters or any of that and and those are all fine and dandy but his storytelling is you know second to none the way he took that to another level and the the way he grew his business and the way his vision was so big that yeah. He was, that it's still growing. They're still adding stuff to the park. They're still creating this incredible environment and the, the thought that went through it, that, you know, each, you know, when you go into the stories about why he did what he did and the way the park is designed and how it's designed that you are like in each section. And this is actually important and to what we're talking about. Each section of the park, you do not know what's going on in the other sections because he doesn't want you to have a, like a FOMO going on. He wants you to be present also, in that section. Also, if there's construction going on or whatever happens to be happening, they find a way to beautify it so that you're not impacted. It doesn't, right. it doesn't yeah. if there's like all this crap going on over here, you're seeing the beauty and you don't know what the crap is over there. And, and that's really a skill, right? To, to be able to, you're going into work today and you're leaving behind whatever to not to take not to take whatever it is with you into the thing that you're doing today and how to compartmentalize or separate. And I mean, the people that I work with are really good at that. They need to do more of like actually telling the truth about how they're mm. really feeling in their lives, not telling the truth, but telling the truth about how they feel because they're used to sucking it up. Um, but so I think, you know, we, we think about vacation, like why was that? Why did I have such a nice time? Cause when you hear Disney, you, it can go one of two ways. <laughs> okay. You're either going to think, Oh yeah, fun rides, um, pretty scenery, you know, great restaurants, good food, or you're going to think lines, hot, hot of hail, uh, angry people, mobs, honey, you're going to, you're going to think one of two ways. And believe me, both things are available, right? There's the suck and there's yeah. the fun. And that might be the cat or is that her? No, that was Ellie. <laughs> um, so, so what what makes a difference, right? It, it, you, you can find both things in every experience. So it's really our focus. And so what I what I know for sure is as soon as that vacation mode comes, for me, the reason it's so different, right, from my regular life, if I don't, if I'm not conscious of it, is because I'm a strategizer in my everyday life. I'm a planner, I'm a thinker. The world's playing checkers and I'm playing chess. I'm like five steps ahead of everybody else of what needs to get done. And I'm in, I'm a control freak, right? So I, I like to be in charge and strategize and figure things out. And I don't want any surprises. And I like to know everything, right? 
Well, when we're on vacation, it's like my opportunity to check out, man. That's part of the reason that I would dr binge drink back in the day was because I was so in control of everything and so like had to be like on all the time and sharp and with it that I would drink to like just let my mind go somewhere else. It didn't have to be so vigilant all the time. So now when we go on vacation, it's like, honey, you're in charge, right? You take us, get the fast passes, man. Do whatever it is that you need to do because all I want to do is walk around in Disney like this. Like you don't know if I got a problem, okay? Because you're just like, uh, that's what I prefer. And so, but here's the crazy thing. That's a decision that I make to go, okay, I'm going to check out because if I were in control in Disney, my time would be crap. I would be having a crap time because I'd be like, where's the fast pass? Where are we going? Let's go. Let's get the thing. <laughs> you know, like an idiot. Which is probably why there are sometimes you can find some of those people who are going not around having a good time. Not, not thrilled. Well, what a blessing for me. So now I come back to work, okay? Now I come back into my real life, everyday life, and I go, man, back to the real world, right? Well, not really. What am I going for? How can I bring hashtag vacation vibes into my Tuesday now? Well, I can be less of a freaking control freak, right? Maybe I can find a way in my work today to go more with the flow because I know when I'm working from inspiration, off of my flow, I feel so much more, so much better. So I have more fun, more flexibility, more freedom. That's what I'm going for. And a lot of the people that I work with are going for is like, man, I'm so tired of being so in control. I'm so tired of being so on. How do I have more freedom, more flexibility, go with the flow? And so that's what I'm going to be working on today because when I come off of a weekend like that, it's easier to go, oh, yeah, I remember how good that feels because the mind lies. It'll say, no, 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 it feels better to be so vigilant, so strategic, so in control. Well, for people like me and you who that's like our, you know, we, we have to do that because of whatever situation we grew up in or whatever programming we have, the, some, there are some people that need to be more strategic we're not one of them, right? If like if you're vibing with that, you're like, yeah, 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 I know, I need a break, right? Because I, I get to the point of overwhelm and exhaustion, and then I just want to check out from all of it, right? And so the the gift of of that conversation is is that awareness, right? Step one, awareness, right? Conscious of what it is that you get out of it, and having having been through multiple careers and and that's the other thing like you can pull it out even more so you have coming back to your daily but then there's some people making decisions about what they're going to do with their lives with their career and and having been through a few careers i kind of ran the same exercise in that what do i love about whatever it was i was doing right so on vacation well, how on, can you bring vacation right back? how can okay. you bring vacation but it, how, how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So if you look at what you love about vacation, so we love to travel. Mm -hmm. We love to see, you know, like new places, new environments. That's why, I mean, Disney's great because they're always growing and expanding and changing things. Um, uh, that's one of the reasons we also enjoy it. But um, meeting new people, right? Connecting with different people and, and having these experiences. It, we don't really do this in in a holiday, but we kind of do like uh, like adding value and having fun. Like uh, when um, the first day we got, we would go to the Magic Kingdom, and there was a couple that asked us to you know take a picture of them. And the first thing I did was take a few pictures of myself as they were getting all set up. I was doing that, and you know it's just to add that entertainment, that fun vibe. So now when they go leave to look at their pictures, they're going to see me making a silly face, like oh you know, and like to add that sort of lasting impression. Well, when we take that into then our work, whether it's just getting back to your daily or you're looking at, um, are you in transition? Are you looking to get out of a situation and create a new one? So, excuse me, I looked at when I was making my switch from music, when that whole industry went through its challenges, it's like, all right, well, what do I love about what do I do, what I'm doing? And I looked at, well, I love doing the traveling, going on tour. I love meeting new people. And it's like, well, it's a lot like how I, why I enjoy holidays. I love, you know, when we go out, checking out new foods from the wherever we were. I love leaving a lasting impression. 
and entertaining people, getting people a distraction from whatever is going on in their day to day. And then that's what transitioned me into full time coaching, speaking and training, because it was just like what I was doing in music. Only now it was adding even more value, it was just taking what that was and enhancing it. So when you look at what you're experiencing when you're in your joy, you go, well, where, how could I bring that into my day to day, into my career, into that? And what Heidi shared is she recognized, ooh, I'm actually more relaxed. I'm in allowing the flow to happen and riding that current of joy of all of that without trying to control it. It's like being in the, uh, the lazy river. Now, guys, legit, the lazy river is my favorite activity on vacation. I, when you're talking, sometimes I'm listening to you. I'm like, oh my God, we are so different. It is a miracle, guys, when you think about, and it's not like opposites attract, like, oh my God, it's not like that. That means something else in another, for another topic. But we are so different in this sense of like, you want to go to Disney to like connect, you know, you like to connect. I want to check out, man. I don't want to talk to anybody. Don't look at me. I'm in Disney. Like I'm putting my glasses on. <laughs> don't make eye contact with me. I don't want to see you. I don't want to know you. I want to look at you. I want to people watch you, but I don't want you to know that I'm people watching you. Okay. So it's like, but we're so wired differently, right? Like if we give a big talk somewhere and we go, so I'm introverted by my nature. I'm, I'm very introverted. I know that sounds crazy. And Doug is an extrovert. So how do we know this? An introvert doesn't mean like you're they're socially illiterate. Illiterate. Like you can't like go tell me, hey, that's awkwardness, right? That's another thing. But so for me, if we go do a big giant event, um, if I'm talking to people for like eight hours, I'm training, I'm giving you my heart and soul that whole time there, I'm connecting with you, I'm giving it to you. At the end of the day, I need to go home pull the blinds, turn on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills only, only that one, and and just escape, okay, from the planet. You want to go to dinner with everybody that we just trained, and you're like, yeah, let's keep talking. Let's let's circle back and piggy, pigtail and dovetail, and you want to go in and keep talking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I just need – so for, so it's so good to know your partner as well, right? So when we are places, it's not like Doug's planning a bunch of get togethers with people, right? Right. right. Like, oh, hey, uh, let's go hook up with the Joneses and let's, uh, no, honey, I need to go like be away from everybody and everything and not have to just even pretend that I want to make eye contact with somebody. So it's good to support each other in that, right? It's good to it's good to be on the, on the team together and know, I mean, today's Teamwork Tuesday, but to know who's on your team. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it for you? See, we're different from each other and maybe you're different as well. What was it about, what are two or three things from this weekend that you noticed about yourself that made you go into hashtag vacation mode? And how can you cultivate those into your everyday? Now, some of you are saying, well, I'm going into places that I just can't cultivate it because I just have to be, I don't even like where I'm going or what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's a conversation for another time, right? To think about, uh, are you coming back? Yep. To think about, are you in the right thing even for you? You know, sometimes there are things that you can do to like when to use your self-help tools and when to go in there and like change everything or when to walk away. And that's a real art form, especially for people that we work with that are like so used to, you know, cultivating all these self-help tools and change your state and know what to do. And so you can do that. You can apply, and that's what we're encouraging you to do is like, how can I bring more of the flow into my day? Or how can I bring more of that peace or just like serenity now, serenity now into my everyday moments? But some of you have been doing serenity now for like months and months, right? You've been marching into that same thing that you really can't stand, and your vacation is so coveted and beloved because you really don't love the life that you're doing every single day. Life is too long to be living a life you don't love. Life is too long to be living a life that you don't love. Life is not too short. It's too long, right? Do you see? So if I'm struggling and every day I'm, I'm, I'm marching on into this thing, it might be time. Why am I saying that? Why is that important? Because a lot of people that I work with are ride or die. They'll keep staying in it and staying in it and hoping things will change and keep working on themselves and going, what's wrong with me? That's the primary question. Like, what's wrong with me? Instead of what's wrong with this? 
what's wrong with this situation or this scenario? People that I serve are so used to taking all the responsibility. I caused all this. It's all my fault. Well, honey, no, maybe you need to look at the situation and say, well, maybe the situation needs to change too, right? So let that be a barometer for you today. Do you need to change or does that need to change? I just went on. I just, yeah. I'm just riffing with my friends. Right just riffing. So riffing with Ashlyn and we Caroline did try and, and, and work a little bit while we were there. And we tried to, we brought the book and we were going to take pictures in all sorts of, we're, and I was checked out. Yeah. We okay. were on, we were on holiday. We were on holiday weekend. Hashtag holiday brain. Yeah. Um, so, however, I did, I might, well, you'll see the new strategy with this because you guys know I'm a strategist. Um, and we're going to have some fun with us. However, it, it was cool to have it. Like, you know, just to be around Ellie at one point, the best part of this was Ellie was looking at it in the stroller and she goes, you wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> she really put it together. Um, and then said, yeah. So to, so she's cute. like, why, why did you, you well, it's to help people. She's like, books don't help people. I was like, no, they, they do. If they read them, well, she said, only good books help people. That's what she said. Only yeah. good books help people. That's really? a good one. Okay, yeah. Still on pre-order. You can get it. Get it while it's hot. Yeah, we're still, we haven't confirmed let's, our, let's our day comments. yet. Yeah. Okay. Let's read your So, comments. Bob, if you're still here, your future's Hi, so Bob. bright. Still have to wear shades. Of course Aww. you do. Love you, Deb. Morning, James. Okay, when you like the weekend vacations are detoxing for your soul. Just got back from Just three days of unplugged. Yes. Four wheel riding, nice. Yeah, four wheelers. I grew up on four wheelers. Yes. Well, actually, Mark, this guy had a four wheeler. He almost killed me on it several times. Campfire, cooking, and all of nature. Oh, when I was a little girl, I had a BFF named Jamie, and she used to go to this place called Big Bear Lake. And every single summer her parents were so cool we would go up there and play this thing called manhunt in the woods which was like adult hide and seek or <laughs> big kid hide and seek anyway oh my god some of the best days in my life were senate spent at big bear lake one summer i pretended to be french and i really didn't speak any french or know any french but i wanted to impress the boys so I <laughs> and then i got busted i went for the whole time talking like this and trying to be French for the Holy entire man. weekend. Um, I was probably 12, I guess, I suppose. <laughs> and so I'm pretending to be French. And then the boy that I really like, I just keep pretending I don't speak so good English. And then I saw him and I didn't know he was there. And I was like, hey guys, wait up. And he was like, oh yeah, Frenchy. I blew my cover. Or he said, wow, that was an amazing American accent. <laughs> I said, oh, thank you. I practice all the time. It's fantastic. I love that. Life is too long to live a life you don't love. Boom. That just That's hit right. home. That's I'm so we're... glad, Paige, because let's make a meme, all okay, right, of like an old person sitting there with like a million wrinkles going, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or with that one, one, like, you know, what what my life, what my friends think my life was like, what my family thought my life was like, what, and then, you know, what my life was really like. We want to actually make what my life is really like amazing, and the other ones – Amazing. I want them all to be good. I'm trying to. Oh, honey, you're just that. a good news bear. That's yeah. what I love. Well, no, but, uh, and with the, the purpose of those memes are they, like it's to show like it's not as it's uh, perceived, but we want to see it's even better. I love it, baby. Let's try to live our lives even better than we believe we is possible, right? So, yeah, what can we bring into today? What can we change up? I know for me, I'm going to be flowing, less hustle, more flow. Um, there's a time for hustle. I don't even like that word though, I have to tell you. I used to love it. When I was like a high achieving corporate ladder climber, I was like, ooh, hustle, baby, hustle, hustle. Now I'm like, shut up. It's the same, I, I get like a visceral reaction to like lady balls, boss bitch, bitch babe, anything that's like tells me to grab my balls because balls are sensitive. You don't want to be grabbing your balls to do things. I mean, I know it's 6.30, we're having the conversation, but I have to tell you, if you want, you know, what's tough is like your womb, okay? So embrace your femininity. All right, that's tougher than the balls. Trust me. This is true. There's it's a baby in there. It's like you can uh. punch it. It'll take a licking and keep on ticking. Um, the womb is where it's at, baby. All right, so the womb is all about the flow, <laughs> okay? It's all about the flow. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. You finally got a Happy and Gilmore reference in there. Flowing through our day. All right. So we want Men's to flow is a little bit say, different. Men's flow is... I'm not even going to be, now I'm not going to be obnoxious at 6.30 in the morning, but I was going to do a different move. It's not. I'm not going to do that like one. That. Okay. 
Hey, let me get out of here. Come on. Come on. Hey, baby girl. So the other thing that um, we're looking at, our friend uh, Jason um, has uh, the Misfit Nation. And, and we, you know, one of the things that I have always felt like is that um, I've always felt like a misfit among the island of misfits. And um, so we're looking at uh, mission-driven misfits. For those of us who feel <laughs> like we're, we know we're different. We know there's some, now here's the thing. Everybody's I'm different. different. Yeah, Everybody's different. unique. Everybody's I'm special. Yeah. Right. But some, some of us may feel a little more different than others and don't always feel like we quite fit in. And that's a blessing and a curse. And the choice is, which do we embrace? Do we embrace the blessing of it or, or do we embrace flag. the curse, right? Wave your, let your freak flag fly. And that's, that's the gift of uh, sometimes for people going on vacation, they get to just be themselves. They get to let loose. They get to do things that maybe I they wouldn't usually do. A little kitty. That's so cute. Down here. So uh, yeah, our mission-driven misfits are part of our family of people who are committed to allowing themselves to be themselves, to let their freak flag fly. And and Ellie, who's the best person to be? So you're pointing to mommy and you pointed to yourself. yourself. So what does that mean? And yourself. So did you want to say good morning? What's that? Did you have a fun time at Disney? Yeah. You're just coming back down to reality too, right? Are you happy for school today? You want to go to Miss Weasel's dance class today for the dance party? Okay. All right. See, everybody's so having a tough time, yeah. right? This is like reality of trying to get back into the swing after a long... This is your last week of school. O-M-J. Lost I always thought I was the only normal person in my life. Now I realize I'm just a misfit. Yeah, amazing. Isn't that funny how sometimes even feeling normal, thinking that we have normal common sense stuff, and then we see everyone else going like, oh, this is crazy, that actually that is as well being like common sense is not so common. And that's such an interesting dynamic that we all experience. Um, <laughs> And excuse it. Funny story. The the other thing I just wanted to to quickly excuse share. Uh, that was on. Send me. Okay, <laughs> just got the uh, text from Frank. If you saw on below this video, I believe there's a picture. Funnily enough, Frank McKinney, uh, thirty-five ninety-two South Ocean um, down here. His final masterpiece. Um, he had a contest for uh, the basically the the most creative photo. And so we were driving back last night, and Heidi's like, uh, you know, they only fit, they're picking two winners. And one of them was a picture of these amazing chandelier, like jellyfish. He has this jellyfish sphere, and it's amazing if you look at the pictures. Um, but not, not my pictures. Of all the, like, go just do hashtag uh, 3492 South Ocean. You'll see all the pictures. Amazing, amazing house. And um, I had seen someone had taken a similar picture to mine, and Heidi was like, was driving down, like, Oh, you know, they're picking two winners and here's one, you know, like that's got Frank's face in the jellyfish sphere and all this. And then the, this lamp and I'm driving. I'm like, oh, wow, that, I took a picture kind of like that. I thought it was the other person's picture. And uh, it turns out that it was my picture that is in the running and basically is offering, you know, a $3,492 prize for the best picture. And uh, Come to mommy, make it right. <laughs> make it right. Huh? So. <laughs> <laughs> what what was so funny is is We're not gonna win. Frank Frank called last night and he's like uh, he was just sharing it was in, it was such an interesting thing like the, the the woman who did the the picture was so sweet she's like oh I really like that other picture and if I win I want to share the you know the winnings and and all this and it was just yes we are <laughs> and it's just it was just such a beautiful statement as far as like we talk about the you know the the mission driven misfits and how all of us misfits are all so aligned and together that you know like when I voted for it for it too it's like oh well I mean they're both great. I love the other picture that's great but of course I'm gonna vote for my own picture but it, like the just the 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 joy around oh my the God, whole I just process think like my clients some of my clients back and me before all the work might have might have voted for the other person's picture. <laughs> You know, like, no, it's okay. You have it. I don't, I don't, it's okay. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, seriously, like, no, 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 it's fine. You, you win. 
It's okay. I don't want to win. Right. So yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, number two. He's he's on his hey, the, the second woo-hoo! picture, Steve. and it was just so it was so sweet that um you know that a that we were well a that we were there. That was such a blessing. Uh, such amazing you know people there and opportunity. Just the, that environment of just incredible people, and and that's also something to look at is the even when you're on a holiday and you sometimes people like going on holidays with their families and with their friends and going on those group things. Well, again, like we're designing our life to create all the things we love to do. We continue to do it. How can we grow even more? How can we go to more places? How do, how could we impact more people? How could we travel and do it as a family, as our career? and surround ourselves with incredible people like Frank and Steve and all these amazing people that are mission-driven misfits, just like us. So I want to just leave this note too. There are a lot of you because of who I serve in particular that have dysfunctional family dynamics. Some of you are literally happy to be going back to work today because you're like, thank God. I had an exit strategy. I survived the family. Right. Nothing bad happened. Nobody <laughs> caught on fire. I had to go to the barbecue. Nobody the drowned. morning of the barbecue. Nobody <laughs> fell in there. Nobody fell off the cliff. You know what I mean? Like, you've got that family. I get it. I totally understand. Every 4th of July, I thought my dad was going to blow his hands off, and it was traumatic with the fireworks and the Miller Lite. I totally understand it. If that's you and you're having a little PTSD off your little family – uh, uh, Memorial Day, let's hook up, send me a message. I can talk you off the ledge. We can start to work through it. My sweet spot, the, I work with a lot of people, but my sweet spot are people that come from really dysfunctional backgrounds that have this dynamic, like you're, you're a high achiever, you're really successful, you have all these wonderful things going for you, but you have this thing over here. It's like, you just can't seem to get it together, right? In your relationship and your family dynamics somewhere. So if that's you, I know that this weekend sucked, okay? There was stuff about it that was not good. You promised yourself you weren't going to get sucked in again to to aunt so-and-so's bull, but you did. And so I'm here to help you, okay? So just on a side note, um, send me a message. I got you, boo. And if we're going to be sharing that, my sweet spot is people reinventing themselves and going out and sharing their message. So coaches, speakers, salespeople, influencers, how to influence yourself, how to influence others. And very often times we need to do that when we're having to reinvent, to come up with a new way of being to show up, whether it's in your current career or if you're transitioning into a new career. Um, misfits, untie or unite. You would love me. My family is up the charts. Honey, Sally, you're my people. I mean, come okay? on. You're my people. The, the more dysfunctional, the better, honey. I love to get in there. Okay? <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do. I eat dysfunction I, I, for dinner. Okay, honey? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> it's my Well, grand. not every meal. Let's have some meals. No, I know, I know, I know. I used to do it in my own yeah. life. I used to attract the relationships that were dysfunctional, but then I married stability, and now I get to work in dysfunction, right? See the difference? You do it for your livelihood and not in your personal life, and we can all be happy and healthy at the same time. Because your desire to fix your family isn't going to go away. It's just misplaced, right? And sometimes futile. Correct. I'm going to know. Well, all right. So thank you so much. Um, we'll see you tomorrow morning. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, topics you'd like covered, you'd like to speak with us uh, offline, please reach out to us. Uh, We are here to serve, and we love you for who you are and who you aren't. Go to YouTube and subscribe because Facebook's changing their algorithms, and these things are going to disappear soon. Mm. So make sure you're subscribed over at our websites, revolutionarygrowth.com, HeidiRain.com, YouTube, because when this goes away. YouTube is Revolutionary Growth TV. Okay, guys. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.